Hey, listeners, welcome to another episode of the Kids Ministry 101 podcast. We are talking today to uh, to our friend Jeremy Carroll. Hey, JC, what's up? Hey, Chuck, how's it going, man? It's going all right. I see that you've got your Hawaiian shirt rocking today. That's right. Still summer, you know, still, still feeling the, the summer beach vibe, even though I'm not there. You know, the funny thing is, I feel like I have completely lost every sense of what season it is and what's <laughs> happening. This whole lockdown thing is just so disorienting. It's like you don't know what day it is. You know, it's like Christmas break. You know, it's like at some yeah. point in time, you forget what day it is. You forget where you are. You forget who you are. And so this yeah. is kind of that sort of a time, isn't it? It is. I, I Yesterday I was talking with a group of people that I am introducing myself had never met before. And um, and I, I actually didn't even give any thought to this statement, but um, I was just introducing myself to my family. I said, yeah, my wife and I, we celebrated 20 years of marriage in January. And then it's been another 20 years since then. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it, like, it just feels that way. It just feels like we've been through so much and we just have no concept of how long it's been. Not at all. And so, you know, with all the displacement and things that we've experienced it's, uh, you know, we're working from different locations. Um, I've got a setup in my, what used to be a garage that we, we've converted to a family room. Uh, but, it, and I never thought of this as a space that I would spend so much of my, <laughs> of my time, right. but right. it's like we're finding new ways to do things. And so we're mm-hmm. going to talk about that today. Uh, That's we're right. going to be talking about place and the, uh, the, uh, how our spaces and our places affect the way we do ministry. And the reality that, that that's changing and something we have to think about. So, but, but first I want to talk with you about something more fun. So I I want to ask you, you know, through this whole process of, of newness, I think a lot of us are discovering new things or rediscovering old things, uh, just because our worlds are so different. So I wanted to ask you, what are one or two of the things that you have either discovered for the first time that you're like, Oh my goodness, I was never aware of this. And now because of lockdown or whatever, you've found something. I'm, I'm talking to give you time to think. Yeah. And or is there something else? Is there something else that you've rediscovered, which was like, oh, I had forgotten about this. And now look, here it is. It's back. Uh, yeah, let me I guess a couple of things that probably fall into the rediscovered category. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's 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 been a discovered um, brand new fresh. Um, but like you, you mentioned your garage space. I have, um, this season of, uh, kind of quarantine and crisis and just being at home more and more and combine that with finding places to work. I got six kids. We don't have a huge house. There's always trying to find a place to work is not very easy, especially with uh, quiet where you can focus or where you can that, talk like this. Yeah, that's right. And, and there are minimized interruptions. And that way I'm not a YouTube phenomenon with the kids coming in. You've seen those, right? The kids sneaking in on a, on a big important meeting. Um, and so one of the things I would, we've done is we've started converting uh, previous owners of our house had this really nice 10 by 20 shed out mm. in the back. And so um, it was just a normal standard shed. We were using it for storage or whatever. And so I found it's got a lock on the door. And it's had electricity to it. So I found that I could go out there and work. Well, okay, well, it's 90, 95 degrees outside. That's yeah. not super conducive. So I've uh, rediscovered some uh, some kind of handyman, putting up some insulation, um, start working on walls and some things like that. Um, interior decorating. What can I do? Some yeah, things yeah. That will, that will uh, make this space a little more enjoyable and pleasant to the eye, especially when I'm on Zoom calls with people. Um, and so that's one thing, kind of rediscovered some kind of handyman, just interior design, crafty work, just trying to do some of that stuff. Another thing I've discovered that, so when I graduated seminary, which has now been uh, 15, 14, 15 years ago, um, I had two two big things. All right, now I'm, I, I'm not consumed with learning education anymore. I have two big goals. And to be completely honest, I've done zero work on any of them. One of them was to become uh, fluent in Spanish. I still want to do that, but I, that's, that's, um, I haven't done that. The other one was I wanted to rekindle my uh, passion, uh, or re, or guys kindle, whatever, I don't know, but, but, um, I want to play the piano better. I used to play the piano a little bit wow, when okay. I was, when I was little, uh, took piano lessons when I was elementary school and kind of let it go. Now music's always been a big part of my life. I play guitar. I sing a little bit. Uh, I, I know my way around a piano. Um, and so one of the things I put out in my, uh, office slash shed space is, uh, we haven't had an extra keyboard. And so I set it up out there. And so I try to take every day, I try to take 
uh, a 10 to 15 minute break through from work. Um, and I have a Baptist hymnal open or another, a uh, couple of other songs uh, that I'm trying to, to, to learn. And so I'll just kind of go out there and I'll play a little bit. And uh, so that's kind of been a rediscovered hobby, so to speak, that I'm trying to, to work on. I have made a lot of progress, but it's, it's been nice to have it and, and to work you know, have a goal. So, all right. So that is really impressive. <laughs> I, I honestly, that's one of those things where, so I have realized during this lockdown process that I don't really have aspirations like that in my life. So I used to, and I feel like there are things that I've chased after over the years and that I've yeah. achieved and done. And then you kind of just fall into a mode where you're just mm-hmm. living, you know, you're, you're yeah. working, you're getting stuff done, you're taking care of the essentials. But to have goals like to be fluent in Spanish or to, to have to get better at playing keyboard or piano and actually chip away at that, that is so inspiring. I actually posted on my, my Facebook a week or two ago, what is it, you know, just for my friends, hey, what is it that you are doing right now that's a dream you're chasing after? Yeah. And it's amazing how few people had anything <laughs> to say because I think we just tend to survive. So, What's funny is I saw that post and I thought, you know, I don't really have anything I'm doing. I don't. Yes, and, you and do. So, Look at you. And so, and so <laughs> until you said it and asked it just the way you did, I thought I didn't. I didn't think I could have answered that and replied to that. But I see, I, there I, you go. Well, go do that. It'll make my <laughs> post look a little bit better. That's uh, right. So, but you, so you've inspired me because you uh, are, you know, your table building and their construction things that you <laughs> have those hobbies. That inspires me because I'm thinking. Man, I like those tables. You know, I wonder if I can do something quite that that impressive. I I can't at this yeah, point. Yeah, we've but talked a little bit about building benches we, and different templates. Yeah, so yeah, we need to we, keep that. That'll be another have. episode. We'll have to do a whole other <laughs> podcast about building stuff. So we we have a couple things, or I have a couple things that that we've discovered during this, or that I have. One of them is uh, records. So we took mm. just a little time. Our our house was we had a water leak, and so we had to clear out of our house to get it fixed. Yeah. And while we were gone, we stayed in a little Airbnb that had a, t- a record player and some old records, like old Ray mm-hmm. Charles records. Yeah. And so the kids and Chris and I listened to these old records, and that was what we did. For, and it was so cool. And so we came mm-hmm. home, and I found out I had a friend who had an old record player. And he's like, well, you can have it. And so he gave it to us. Nice. And so now we, we're in this place where we are kind of rediscovering vinyl. No, so we don't have like super discerning tastes yet. So we're just like, what can we find at Goodwill, you know, and what can That's we right. find on Facebook Marketplace? And so we've got a couple records, but my wife brought home this old Imperials record that's like all this old kind of gospel, but it's all these songs that are like old, but they're super good. And so we've yeah. been listening to these old records and it's been really fun. That's so really we kind funny. of rediscovered that. That's cool. I, I, uh, this was pre pandemic, but I, um, found that I had a, a record player. We don't have, I don't have any vinyl. So we haven't really chased this down a little bit, but I've introduced my kids, my younger kids in particular to vinyl because we found a stack of, I don't know, 30 or 40, um, like kids things. And one of them, and this is the one for whatever reason my kids want to play, my elementary schoolers just want to play over and over again. It's an old, uh, vinyl that just plays a version of a Kentucky fried chicken jingle over <laughs> and over and old. And they just, we do chicken, right? And so it's just over and over and, but it's on vinyl. And so uh, we haven't really chased that down, but I have introduced my kids to vinyl recently. Um, that's, that's a neat hobby though. I, I, that's cool. Okay. So that you actually, with your chicken reference gave me the segue <laughs> that I was looking for. So we, I was trying to figure out how do we bridge this into what we're yeah. talking about today. Yeah. And you said KFC. Okay. So KFC right. is like the chicken of yesterday. It's the turntable of chicken. Mm-hmm. That's right. The, the, uh, the, the digital music of chicken, if that is a thing, would be Chick-fil-A, <laughs> right? It's the chicken of today. Chick-fil-A right. is the chicken of today. That's right. We are not sponsored by Chick-fil-A, at least not yet. So Chick-fil-A, if you would like to underwrite the Kids Industry 101 <laughs> podcast, you can send money and or chicken. You can just send chicken uh, to right. us. So we, we have been working together, Jeremy, along with Jana Magruder and Landry Holmes on putting together a new ebook that we're going to release soon. That is, um, uh, attributes of an unshakable kids ministry. And one of those attributes that you're writing about and that you and I have been discussing together is, is, uh, we, we, t- we call our decentralized work environment WFA. It's work from anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so as you and I were talking about how do we, how do we put words to this for the church of doing church from anywhere? We said CFA, which is yeah. CFA. It's not Chick-fil-A. It's <laughs> no. church from anywhere. <laughs> There's right. the segue. That was the big segue. Good. So we're in a place now where, 
um, where ministry, which has traditionally been connected to a place, mm-hmm. you come to church. We have a kid's space. There's a youth building. There's a children's wing, right? We have uh, right. a sense of place where ministry has always happened. And that has changed. Just like you're renovating your shed as a workspace, I'm working out of my garage. Uh, everyone everywhere has kind of readjusted to our, our places and spaces. And so we have discovered that we are in a time that has caused people to innovate, to think differently about doing ministry when we're not in those places. And so that's what we want to talk about today is this this discovery or this rediscovery that church really isn't a place, is it? That's right. And I think, like you say, rediscovery, I think that's a good term because I think if you had pressed any leader, uh, even a kid men leader, we would have said, um, the church is the people. We all learned it, right? Uh, the church is the, is the people inside. We, we know it's not the building. And we would have said that. We've taught it, no doubt. Um, but we, because of, of what we have learned and seen over the last several months here in 2020, um, we have nearly overnight had to come face to face with, does our practice meet our, our preaching? Um, mm. do we, do we say, we say churches can really be anywhere. It's the people, but, do we, do, are we, are we living that out? Is it impacted? Is it shown in our ministries? And, and uh, we've, we've, I think we've rediscovered that. Yes, man, we really have to understand it because we have overnight had to become real creative in how do we continue to connect with people who can't physically be in the same space as us. And so I think that's, that's exactly right. Well, and so for us as leaders, we, we really have to be able to turn that corner. And, and honestly, my concern is that some of us are a little more slow to accept that reality and to continue to minister. Because mm-hmm. I think initially when this, you know, when this COVID hit and it completely surprised everybody, we, we had to stop meeting in person really quickly. Some people moved immediately to doing some form of a virtual ministry, some sort of a video driven thing or, you know, uh, or something through social media. Um, and others said, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to watch and wait and see what happens and we'll be back soon. And we've been through this whole process of when will we be back or are we almost ready to go back or when we go back, here's what we're going to do. And the reality is we can't wait until we go back, right. can we? So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we can't wait. So I, I think for me, as as I think through, um, and this kind of has some implication, I'll just kind of draw this implication to our resources at Lifeway, because um, I've said this to our teams quite a bit over the last, even the last couple of weeks is... Um, uh, one of the things we we don't want to le- we would be unwise if we let the lessons we have learned from the from the last several months in 2020 um, not help shape a new way of doing ministry going forward. And so um, I think what is highlighted for us is that uh, those who pivoted quickly, I think, was because they already had some of those things embedded into their ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they were already had a little bit of a pulse on social media or. They had made some YouTube videos or something for their uh, ministry in some capacity. Or maybe they were just announcements, um, but they they had some connection in some way that those technology pieces were already built in in some capacity, some level into their ministry. And I think those who pivoted quickly saw that that they could do that because it was already built in. I, I, I kind of sense that those who pivoted less quickly was because they hadn't really not thought about how those things should be a regular part of our ministry already. Mm-hmm. Um, how can we already be getting um, uh, resources, content, teaching, guidance into the home versus just relying on what we do in a physical space? And um, and so many kid men leaders who realized quickly, well, I didn't have that built in. So how did I do that? They may have been a little slower to respond. Some of them probably said, you know, maybe we don't need to respond. We can't wait it out. Um, but I, I, I think what it has to me, in my mind, what it has shine, uh, shown a light on is that as we do return, whatever that looks like, um, we need to, Lord willing, we will never have another global pandemic. But, mm. but what lessons have we learned about specifically in our conversation about the church not being confined to a space. What have we learned yeah. about being ready to serve the church fam- our families that we serve, the kids that we serve, serve them in their homes, in their neighborhoods, in their communities? Um, what have we learned and, and, and how can we bake that in as a permanent part of our kids' ministries going forward? Hmm. So I've been, I've been working, just as I've been thinking about this, um, 
you know, it's like you said, hopefully we never are faced with this again. What we don't know is how long this will last. Right. And we certainly can't wait to be back together the way that we were. We don't know what that will ever look like. But I've been drawn to consider uh, the Apostle Paul. And so just reading through some of some of the epistles um, just this this week, uh, there are four epistles that he wrote from prison. Right. And he <laughs> repeatedly expresses to the churches that he's writing to, I wish I could be with you. Mm-hmm. I wish I could be with you. But because of the lockdown, literal lockdown that Paul was under, <laughs> yeah. we have epistles that have that are so rich with doctrine and with teaching and with the the and, and, and that we would not have had arguably right. if he were not locked down. Mm-hmm. And so my question for us is: looking at that, are we so caught up in wishing that we weren't locked down that we miss an opportunity to do something that may outlast? Our, or or out uh, outpace our ordinary uh, way mm-hmm. of doing ministry. So that's one takeaway. Another that I that I thought about that is Paul didn't have Zoom, he didn't have YouTube, mm-hmm. but he wrote letters. Right? He still found ways to do it. And so I think a lot of us may be paralyzed, or or we may think of it maybe a little bit of an excuse to say, well, we don't have the technology capacity to do that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to wait. But there's more to it than technology, isn't there? What? Oh yeah. Yeah, there is so much more than technology, and I and I love seeing. Uh, I saw on a on a social media post. Uh, I think it was last week. I saw it um, where a a Kidman leader was talking about how they said, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna spend a few minutes, um, you know, each morning or every other morning or something this week, and I'm gonna handwrite letters hmm. to the parents uh, of the kids that I serve and just let them know I'm praying for them and, and ask them if there's anything specific I can pray for them. Um, and you know, I thought. I mean, that, that's, that's good. We don't, we don't want to get, as you said, paralyzed by, well, I don't understand technology. I don't know how to make videos. I don't have a media team. I don't, we don't want to get paralyzed by that. Sure. Those are some good tools and, and, and those things can, can be helpful to us. Um, but we can also do some other things that are, that are not so technologically savvy. A simple email uh, would work, but a handwritten letter um, would, would go a long way. So I think, I think there's certainly some non-technological components that uh, we don't want to we don't want to miss as as we're considering uh, how these things fold in. Yeah, because really technology is just one tool that we have in our toolbox, and if it's if we think we have to master that one tool in order to do ministry, that could really be misleading. Mm-hmm. Um, and because really, church from anywhere can can be anywhere in any way, right? So it could be in a park, it could be in a driveway, it could be on the telephone. Yes, it could be through social media of some kind. It could be in a mailbox. There's lots of ways that we can continue to minister, um, and so really it faces it poses a new challenge for us. But I tend to say that every every obstacle is an opportunity, and so we need to continue to look for ways to minister in our context in a way that makes the most sense. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I, you know, we've we've heard of so many things, and you've heard some of these, and, and probably some of our 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 listeners have heard these things too. Um, non-technical ways. We make activity resource bags for, for people to, uh, families to come by and pick up. There's obviously there may be some technology, technology in communicating that. Um, but this is just simply making something to put in the hands of families to be able to use. And so, um, so wow, we can, uh, our church families, the families that we serve, they are, um, they're well, they're, they're like us. They're probably getting a little antsy and don't want to be cooped up in the house anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, if they're like us, when we first first uh, got this quarantine stuff started happening, um, we found it was it was spring. The weather was beautiful. We found that we were spending a lot of time as a family just hanging out. We met neighbors uh, socially distanced, but we yes. met neighbors that we had not met out on and, walks and things. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that we had not met in, and haven't lived in our house in over a year. And our kids made some friends um, uh, through through some neighbors that they. We've seen them, we've waved at them, but we've never didn't know their names, didn't know anything about them. And so um, your families that you serve are doing these same kinds of things. They're they may not be on the ball fields anymore, but they're um, they're they're going places uh, and like you said, the parks, uh, maybe just hanging out in their driveways, taking walks um, and where the church, where the people are. That's where the church is. Mm-hmm. And uh, how can we get that message to them so they both are encouraged by it and challenged by it to then live it out? in their faith. 
And we've always talked about how equipping families is an important part of kids ministry, but probably now more so than ever. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I know that that is something we have as Lifeway, um, as, as Lifeway kids, we have been really, really um, trying to dive deep into that. And that's one of those things, too. As a resource provider, we've said, man, we, we really want to do more to help our kid men leaders because they want to serve their families. What can we do? And when we constantly have that conversation, but just like um, w- there was a, a CFA pivot almost overnight for churches uh, to have to go church from anywhere. We had to say, well, these churches, they need resources and how can we pivot and provide the resources they need to continue to equip their families and uh, parents and things like that. And so again, it's one of those things we would have always said it, Yes, but it, it may not have been as baked into our ministry as we wanted it to be. And since our families are lots of places, uh, we need to be able to, to resource them whenever and wherever they are, um, because wherever they are, that's where the church is. And the, and and we may have the tools. They may feel underwhelmed or overwhelmed or or under resourced to be able to live out their faith. Um, and so, anything we can do to to meet them where they are and to, and to walk alongside them um, is 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 going to be very critical. It's going to create that part, one of those traits, those attributes of creating a truly unshakable foundation for your ministry. Hmm. Well, we have our, uh, the, my son, uh, Tate, who's 11, his Sunday school teacher has faithfully mailed in the mail the activity mm-hmm. page from his regular weekly Bible study to every oh, kid good. in the Sunday school for the last 18 weeks plus. Wow. And so that it's a letter in the mail, right? But mm-hmm. for him, he getting mail is super special <laughs> and opening that up. And so that's just one example of, of something that's not high tech, but that mm-hmm. is a great way to continue to minister. Um, but we, you mentioned we at Lifeway are looking for ways to, to continue to serve and, and resource the church. That's what our role is, is we resource you, the church leader, in your mission of serving the kids and families that you steward. And so we have worked to make the digital side of that easier. And so we have some things that are very, very close to being ready to reveal that are not exactly ready as we record this podcast, but are coming really quickly. So Jeremy, tell us just a little bit about what you know, what you're working on behind the scenes. Uh, we're going to do a whole episode with Brian Dimbozik where we're, we're going to unpack the details of some of these resources. But give us a little bit of a teaser in terms of technology. If we're not the most technologically savvy church, what are we doing at Lifeway behind the scenes to make that easier? Well, one of the things we've seen, um, and, and many of our listeners are going to be in this in this situation. We get, I mean, I could, I've lost track how many emails I received um, in the month of March and April of we bought all these resources, but they're locked up in our church. I can't get to them. What do we do? Um, uh, and you know, those kinds of, those kinds of questions. And so we, um, so what that, again, that, that struck a chord with us and we said, we, we've got to do something new. We've got to think differently about our resources. And so, um, through the spring, we provided through our ministry grid platform, we provided, uh, direct links, uh, direct passages, resources to families through uh, social media and those kinds of things. So families could then uh, get in and do, you know, watch a Bible story video or some of our curriculum and those kinds of things. Um, when we got through that, as we got to the, toward the end of spring, we realized, man, this, this is kind of what we always wanted. Um, we were, we, we always wanted to be able to provide um, family experiences at home that in a way that, um, that, that, that kind of aligns with what's being taught in the quote church, right? In the church classroom, uh, or through the church ministry, we want to be able to do that. And so then we pivoted and, and we were in the summer and said, okay, now church, some churches are starting to meet. We need to provide more resources. So we, we ramped that up through the ministry grid platform, um, and made good strides in that. We adapted our at home experience just a little bit in the summer. Well, as we look toward the fall and beyond, we have one of the things we have learned. I've been talking about lessons we've learned through the time that we want to bake into our ministry. Mm. Um, we, as Life with Kids, have learned that this is this is not. I wouldn't I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the proverbial holy grail, but it's this is one of the things we have longed for. Is how can we provide resources to kid men leaders that are designed to be sent to the home that that align very well with the curriculum for the church but they're but they're written in a way unique and and uh uniquely written in a way that equips a 
a family to walk their children through mm. um, a, a devotional or a, a worship experience of some kind. And so as we look to the fall, uh, you know, we're, this is the path we're on. Lord willing, we're going we're gonna to be able to release um, every every one of our, our our primary resources, those ongoing resources that we say the the Sunday school or life group type curriculums, explore the Bible for kids, Bible studies for life for kids, and the Gospel Project for kids are going to have a unique, a uniquely written family worship experience, um, and it's going to be delivered through Ministry Grid. Um, but if you don't, if you're not in the Ministry Grid platform already, if you're a print customer, we're making accommodations for those as well. Yes. Uh, we don't want anybody to be left out of this. And yes, it's a tech component. Um, and we know that there's some who, who order only print and, and, and we're sensitive to those things. And so, uh, I'm excited that, that when, when we were finally at the point where you and Brian are able to, to really unveil, mm. um, in, in sort of in all its glory, uh, uh, this family worship experience that will be available, that will align with, uh, what's happening throughout the uh, primary teaching function of the church ministry now can be extended and be equipped, um, in, in a, in a more com- complete way in the home. Yeah. And that's exciting. It's, you know, we produce a lot of great media for every one of our uh, Bible study lines, Bible studies for life, kids, gospel project for kids, explore the Bible kids. We make great media mm-hmm. and have fantastic resources that are, that parents may never get to see in a typical traditional Sunday school gathering. Right. And uh, so now we've been working to find ways, like you said, to make it easy for the church leader to pass that stuff on to the home and equip parents to, to do uh, those sorts of studies with their kids, experience the media with the kids, and also engage in uh, in new ways with prayer prompts and different things. And so yeah. that's something we've been working on. It's something that you've been working on, uh, and that's coming soon. So watch yeah. for that. We'll have a whole other episode that, that comes up very, very soon. But as we close, I want to acknowledge that you have a new role. So you have been working as the publishing team leader for Bible Studies for Life Kids now for a season. You also led the Gospel Project for Kids for a season, and you've been leading discipleship for a season. And so now you have a new role. And so your new role, you're now a manager. And so you are leading out over uh, as a publishing manager over discipleship and vacation Bible school. And so that's an exciting opportunity. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, I complete. I told uh, Jana Magruder yesterday. She and I were talking, and I told her I am. I am floored, and I don't even have the right words to express um, the gratitude in my heart for being able to to step into this new new role um, and to and to help our teams um, who who do a fantastic job. We are so proud of our discipleship resources and our vacation mm-hmm. Bible school resources. Um, uh, so it's, it's not a matter that they're broken that I'm excited about it. It's a matter of, we want to continue to strengthen those things, uh, to, to, as we point toward the future. What is, um, how does the, how does VBS, what are the le- lessons we've learned through this very, very difficult VBS summer that we've yeah. had? Yeah. How can we let those things speak into future VBS resources so that we, again, learn the lesson in, in wisdom? We, we can take those, uh, we can lift out what's applicable for non-pandemic seasons, and we can kind of help use those to even further strengthen Vacation Bible School and discipleship resources. I'm getting emails from churches who are saying, um, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a mom and I want to uh, lead a Bible study on my on my block for, for some preteen girls. How can I do that? We have a, a brand new resource, another teaser, a brand new resource coming out in September just for girls. Um, and uh, it's going to be a great little Bible study for girls to be able to do. How can they use that in their home? Okay, we're talking. We want to continue to learn how can discipleship really uh, be unbounded by the locations. This is what we've been talking about all day. Mm-hmm. But how how can we move these things we've learned into VBS? How can we better equip VBS to not just have the backyard Bible club or the standard VBS, but what are the other things we've learned? Uh, virtual, those kinds of things. We want to continue to uh, strengthen these resources, and so I'm I'm excited to be able to kind of help uh, stand beside Rhonda and, and Melita in the VBS side. And, um, and, and, and just, again, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to continue to work to strengthen resources that uh, will better serve the church. Um, as, as you said earlier, as we know, the church leaders are, are trying to make disciples in their communities. We want to be able to make the best resources we can. And we think part of that is learning from our own experiences and what we're hearing from churches and doing our best to adapt and, and, um, 
strengthen those resources through those lessons. Man, they're, we're in challenging times, but exciting times. And so for yeah. those of us who are wired towards innovation, this is invigorating. And so I yeah. hope you listeners uh, are able to move forward. Uh, the, the church has left the building. Fortunately, the church was never the building. And so there's tons of ways. Jeremy, thank you so much for being with us today and for sharing these observations and ideas. And listeners, we thank you for listening. And we want to challenge you and encourage you to do ministry from wherever you are. Paul did it from prison. You can do it from your garage or your shed or wherever you happen to be. (laughs) And uh, without limitation, don't be deterred from ministering to the kids and families that you are responsible for. Um, in, uh, as we talk about finding new ways for delivering curriculum and for equipping homes and for doing VVS in this new world that we are in, we have uh, done that with our Etch Family Ministry Conference. So our Etch Conference is a typically is an in-person gathering that happens in Nashville in October. This year, as a result of the unexpected inability to gather together, we have made Etch a virtual gathering. You can find out information at etchconference.com. Because of this, this opens up the opportunity for you and your church to bring more people to attend this event, to experience the, the, the thought leadership, the insight, the training that Etch brings, the network, the community. Uh, we're excited about the ways that we're going to be able to help you connect and interact with other attendees, even through a virtual gathering for this year's Etch conference. It will be in October. We're calling it Etch Live. Uh, and you can find information at etchconference.com. T- ticket prices are much lower than in person. And our hope is that we would have thousands more than we normally would have in person able to join us online as we do this virtual live conference. So check that out at etchconference.com. Jeremy, thank you. Listeners, we thank you for listening. Join us again soon for another episode of the Kids Ministry 101 podcast.